In the last few weeks, Pochettino has been sacked by Spurs and now Emery has been sacked by Arsenal. The pressure is continuing to build on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's job at Manchester United and December is a huge month for both Solskjaer and the club because we all know that football is a results-driven business. Even if the word from inside United is that there's no pressure on Solskjaer's job, United have to deliver in the next nine games that's coming in the next 31 days. So what I want to do in this video is run through all of those fixtures and say what I expect to happen. And I want to know from you in the comments what you think is going to happen for both Solskjaer and United this December. Now, before we do begin, if you are new to United People's TV, make sure you subscribe down below. But let's get into this one. Just before I start, I do want to say it has been a privilege to work alongside The Athletic for the last few months and you can help make that partnership that little bit longer. All you've got to do is follow the link in the description, get yourself a free 30-day trial and use it over this crazy December period. There's going to be lots of content on there from the likes of Laurie Whitwell, Andy Mitten and David Ornstein, Daniel Taylor. There's a ton of them. I've interviewed a few of them on here and I hope to interview some more. So you will help United People's TV if you can follow that link in the description, get yourself that free 30-day trial and 50% off an annual subscription, less than the price of a pint, cheap as chips, world-class content, no ads, what more could you want? Maybe some wins from United, so let's talk about that. Before I do begin, I want to say something. I completely support the idea that Solskjaer is going to be leaving United in a better place than when he found it, so that whoever his successor in finds United in a better set of circumstances for success to be built on top of it. I absolutely agree with that. But I also don't agree with the sweeping statement that give him time justifies everything. And I said previously in a video that I've seen all these cultural changes, I've seen the things behind the scenes that Solskjaer has helped improve so far at United. But what needs to come next is the consistency with the results and the performances. And that has eluded Solskjaer and United thus far, ignoring those first three months where everything was incredible. And that's what December is all about. Nine games in 31 days. And United sacked Mourinho in December. So it's a month where United's up and down seasons have come to a crescendo previously. Will that happen to Solskjaer? United as a club are saying no. And I personally think that will still be the case. But if the wrong sorts of results come in December, maybe it will. And it all starts with Aston Villa at home, which is a game where United absolutely have to win. No questions asked. Simple as that, really. Nothing apart from a convincing performance and a team performance by United will be enough for Solskjaer in terms of releasing some of the pressure, especially after what happened in Astana. Lost 2-1 to a team that I think had lost 17-1 on aggregate in the Europa League group up until that point. I understood it because it was a team where the whole first team was rested for this Villa game. Even more reason why the win has to be convincing because Astana happened because the whole team was rested. So nothing but a convincing win is enough for United and Solskjaer here. But then Mourinho comes back to Old Trafford as Spurs manager. And what a game that is going to be. And Mourinho is going to be so up for this game that it's going to be incredibly hard for Solskjaer because Mourinho will set his team up to expose any flaws and any weaknesses in the United's team under Solskjaer. And Mourinho is a manager that can attack those weaknesses. That's what he's good at. As a tactician, he's very, very good. And it's been a strong start for him at Spurs, a couple of wins under his belt, and he will want nothing more than to bang a nail in Solskjaer's coffin or to just increase the pressure on him as much as he possibly could against the club that sacked him. So Solskjaer, to get a, a win against Mourinho's Spurs would be such a massive statement. And if it doesn't happen, the pressure is going to be cranked up even more. And it's not going to go down because three days later we travel to Man City to face Pep Guardiola's team at, away from home. Sorry. And I look at these two games here. I always remember under Moyes 
when things were really not going well, it's a different feeling than what it was then. But we played Liverpool and City in the space of a week and we got pumped both times at Old Trafford. And for a lot of fans, that was the turning point. That was the point where they just couldn't back Solskjaer. And there are so many that still back Solskjaer, but I personally don't think I've seen the United fan base this divided. Not under Moyes. Everybody knew Moyes was a right. Not under Van Howe. Everybody was on the same wavelength. It's just that some cracked a little bit earlier than others. And with Mourinho, that was the one maybe we were some split, certainly. But with Solskjaer, it feels like a massive split. And losing to Spurs and City in the space of four days will make that divide much bigger and the pressure to increase much more. Conversely, wins against Spurs and City, I think that pretty much will put Solskjaer in a position where he's probably going to be our manager, certainly to the end of the season. That's how big I think these games are. And that's the situation that United are in. I don't think it will swing like a pendulum from game to game. But the right sorts of wins against rivals like Mourinho, Spurs and Guardiola City, who I now think aren't infallible. Last few derbies I've gone into, I've just been like, oh, just don't get pumped. This one feels a little bit different. They're still massively favourites and an infinitely superior team, but they're not infallible. So let's see what happens there. But that's Villa, that's Spurs and that's City. Three massive games. And then we've got Alkmaar and Everton. Alkmaar, we should be beating them to top the Europa League group. Everton, Christ, they could be managed by Moyes by the time that United face them. They're having a worse season than anybody. But it's those three games. And then you've got, as I said, Alkmaar, Everton. Then you've got Colchester. You've got Watford. You've got Newcastle. You've got Burnley. Nine games in December in 31 days. And for a, a team which has struggled with injuries... Maybe that's why Astana was so important for Solskjaer to play the kids because he needs more players coming through. James Garner and Dylan Levitt, for me, both show that they're good enough to get some exposure to first-team football in the bigger competitions. The same goes for Ethan Laird at right-back. United need... We just need to find that consistency in this December period. I've said it before, how much I'm in support of what Solskjaer is doing culturally at the club in terms of what I've seen with the right signings, with the wrong players leaving the club, there's so much I agree with. But on the pitch, the consistency has still eluded us. We had that little, that little run where we drew against Liverpool, beat Norwich, beat Chelsea, beat Partizan, go and get ruined by Bournemouth. And then that Sheffield United game for 70 minutes was one of the worst 70 minutes you'll ever see from a United team. And then 20 minutes, no, 15 minutes, sorry, we're incredible. And then we conceded a late equaliser. It's just up and down. It's a massive roller coaster for United. And that doesn't help build stability. That's what Solskjaer needs. He needs the stability in the performances. And that is what December is all about. It's about the results. It's not a case I think of... I don't even know what to think, actually, now. Because I'm so in support of what Solskjaer is doing at the club that the idea of sacking him scares me because it will be another short-term decision by the club to turn their back on a manager. But the context of football is everything. And with Pochettino being sacked by Spurs and Emery being sacked by Arsenal, the landscape has changed in the last month. And that's why the pressure has increased massively on Solskjaer for his United team to start delivering. Because if we go through December with the wrong sorts of results, the pressure is going to be pushed up to astronomic levels. Let me know what your predictions are for the five games there to kick off this month. We've got Villa, we've got Spurs, we've got City, we've got Alkmaar, we've got Everton. What are you expecting United to do? Let me know your predictions in the comments and what are you expecting from United and Solskjaer in December? It's such a big month. The festive period is always busy, it's always crazy, but in the context of United right now, it's going to be even crazier. The pendulum swings from game to game could be massive. And it's a test in time for Solskjaer as a manager to get his team to perform and perform consistently. That's the main thing I want to see. I want to see the same level of performance game to game to game to game in the next nine games. I don't want to see an incredible 4-0 win against Villa 
and then a dismal 1-0 defeat against Spurs. And then a great 2-0 win away at City. And then a one all draw against Altmar. We can't have the peaks and troughs. We need just a consistent level of performance that takes United through December. That's what I want to see. Let me know what you think in the comments below. But the pressure is increasing on Solskjaer. Even if the club are adamant that it isn't, with Poch gone and Emery gone, the landscape is changing. And Solskjaer now really has to start delivering on the pitch with the results. Or his job, in my opinion, will be under pressure.